look who's back. And this time, the two of you are partners in the latest installment of the Pokemon Saga. It's Pokemon Yellow, the special Pikachu edition for Game Boy Color, where it's you and Pikachu catching as many as you can together. Look for the Pokemon Yellow Bundle Pack. It includes a limited edition Pokemon Game Boy and Yellow Game Pack. Welcome back, trainers. Today we're diving into the world of Pokemon Yellow. Grab your Pokeballs and get ready for an electrifying adventure through the history, gameplay, and lore of this beloved classic. Pokemon Yellow, released in 1998 in Japan and 99 in North America. It's a special edition of the original Pokemon Red and Blue games, inspired by the widely popular Pokemon anime. It featured several unique elements that set it apart from its predecessors. But how did this game come to be? Let's take a quick look at its history. After the success of Pokemon Red and Blue, Game Freak wanted to create a game that captured the essence of the Pokemon TV show, which was already a massive hit. Pokemon Yellow is designed to closely follow the adventures of Ash Ketchum, the anime's protagonist, and his loyal Pikachu. This connection made the game instantly appealing to fans of the show. So, what made Pokemon Yellow so special? First and foremost, Pikachu. Unlike Red and Blue, your players could choose between Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. In Yellow, your starter Pokemon is Pikachu, who follows you around outside of his Pokeball, just like in the anime. Not only does Pikachu follow you, but it also has its own unique set of animations and expressions. You can even check Pikachu's mood throughout the game. This feature was groundbreaking at the time and added personal touch to the player's journey. But uh, my Pikachu had some sort of speech impediment. Oh my, oh my god, what the fuck happened to Pikachu? Now let's talk about the venture itself. Our journey begins in Pallet Town. Here we receive our Pikachu from Professor Oak, and probably name it Pikachu. Still the same name, but spelled slightly differently. Now after battling our rival Gary and beating him, we set off on our quest to become a Pokemon Master. From Pallet Town, we head north through Route 1 to Viridian City. Heading west, we run into our rival again. We only went down this route knowing he was here, and I wanted to humiliate him again. Before we leave, we pick up King, who will help with Brock. Now heading north from Viridian City, we pass through Route 2 and enter Viridian Forest. This dense forest is filled with bug-type Pokemon like Caterpie and Weedle. Speaking of Caterpie, we catch one. Welcome to the team, Caterpillar. Before we leave the forest, we level up our team to level 10, evolving Caterpillar into Metapod and then Butterfree. Our next stop is Pewter City, home of the first gym leader, Brock. His rock solid defense is backed by Geodude and Onyx. His Geodude goes down easy with a few confusions from Caterpillar. So, we send in King and start spamming Leer to lower its defense, but then Onyx uses Bide. Again, the bind ends with the defenses lowered, King falls, so we send out Pikachu. With only one move that will work being Quick Attack. Yeah, I don't really know what I was thinking either. So, with that, the spamming commences. But then Onyx hits us with another bind. Then, with 12 health left, and Onyx just two hits away from fainting, Onyx uses Screech. But, alas, he survived with just a sliver of health left. He hits his tackle and knocks us out. So after learning my lesson, I return to Brock with a different strategy in mind. Starting off with Geodude again, we all send out Caterpillar, and start spamming Confusion, knocking it out. Now we deal with the big boy, Onyx his ace. Starting off with Confusion to do a decent chunk of damage, Onyx keeps using Screech, lowering our defenses, so we hold strong, continue the barrage of Confusions, but then he uses Bide, surviving our next hit, barely any health left. He will Bide on the next turn as well. So I KO him with the final Confusion, beating Onyx, and the Pewter City Gym, earning our first badge, the Boulder Badge. Caterpillar being our MVP of this fight. With our first badge in hand, we continue east throughout three. Well, we'll find several trainers along this route, we level up our Pokemon to 20, and evolve King into Nidorino to go through Mount Moon, a cave filled with Zubat, Geodude, and the elusive Clefairy. Here we also encounter Team Rocket for that first name, which just so happens to be Jesse and James, with their Ekans, Coughing, as well as Meowth on their team, who battle us after securing the Dome Fossil. After being them, 
We exit Mount Moon and arrive at Route 4 leading to Cerulean City. Before we head into the gym, we go upwards towards the Nugget Bridge Challenge. Our rival Gary, who starts off with a Spearow that easily falls to our Thundershock. Good job, Pikachu. He sends out a Sandshrew, so we send out King and start kicking it. The Eevee comes out and falls to some light kicking as well. We then take on the Nugget Bridge itself. After beating all of the trainers, we go up and pick up Blizzard, the Charmander, and Monkey the Mankey. We level them up to level 20, Blizzard evolving into Charmeleon before heading to Misty. This really is the city gym leader who focuses on water type Pokemon. She starts off with Staryu, so we send out Pikachu and start blasting with Thundershocks, fainting it in two hits. Then we face her Starmie. Misty uses an X Defend, which increases physical defense of her Pokemon, which is cool or whatever, so I hit it again with a Thundershock, which is a special attack, not a physical attack. Starmie then uses Harden. Again, which increases its physical defense. So another Thundershock brings it into the yellow. Just one more hit should do it. So Starmie uses Harden again. Anyways, that was an easy badge. Now with the Cascade badge in hand, we head out to visit Bill. Once we reach Bill's place, we see that Pikachu is interested in him, so we talk to Pikachu. Whatever you say, man. After helping Bill, he gives us the SS and take it. So we head down to Vermilion City. Heading south from Cerulean City through routes 5 and 6, we reach Vermilion City. This seaside town is home to the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge, who specializes in electric-type Pokemon. But for challenging Lieutenant Surge, we need to tame HM01 Cut, found aboard the SSN. This luxury cruise liner is filled with trainers and items. We run into Gary, who is on the ship, and he challenges us to a Pokemon battle. He starts off with Spearow, so we send out Pikachu, and easily faint it with a Thundershock. Then he throws out Rattata, so we switch in Monkey, and take out Rattata with a Low Kick. Gary then sends in Sandrew, so we use Low Kick, but Sandrew survives, and is able to land a Scratch on Monkey. So Monkey then uses Dig, bringing Sandrew into the red. Sandrew lands a Sand Attack, lowering our accuracy, so we finish off Sandrew with another Low Kick. Gary then sends out Eevee, so we keep in Monkey, and land a Low Kick on Eevee, leaving Eevee on one health. They're able to land two attacks, and knocks out Monkey. So we swap in Lizard and land an Ember, burning the Eevee, so Gary runs away crying while we go and check on the captain. After curing him of the plague, we get HM01 Cut. Now that we have Cut, we head to face Lieutenant Surge. After struggling with his gym puzzle, look, I never claimed to be the smartest man, so don't judge me too hard. I might have been stuck on this puzzle for a while. So we're able to complete the puzzle without fighting anyone, and then we head up to Lieutenant Surge. He starts off with Raichu. His only Pokemon, so we send out Monkey and try to hit him with a dig, but then quickly realize that he is seven levels above us. So we train up our team, evolving our Monkey into Primeape, and now challenge Lieutenant Surge to a rematch and send out Monkey again. This time we are able to use Dig and knock him out. Now with the Thunder Badge in hand, we head off. Next, we make our way through Route 11 to Rock Tunnel. This dark, winding cave requires HM05 Flash to navigate. However, I forgot to get Flash, so I just kind of went through without it. Emerging through the Rock Tunnel, we land ourselves in Lavender Town, famous for its Pokemon Tower and haunting presence of ghost-type Pokemon. From Lavender Town, we head west to Celadon City via Routes 8 and 7, while here we also catch a Ponita named Goldie. Celadon City is one of the largest cities in Kanto and home to the Celadon Gym led by Erica and her grass-type Pokemon, defeating her on us the Rainbow Badge. But right now, we are here to take on Team Rocket in the game corner, so we can get the self-scope. Heading through the game corner, we come across Jesse and James again, who battle us, first sending out Coughing, so we Thunderbolt with Pikachu. Next out comes Meowth, so we Thunderbolt them as well, and then Ekans, who we also Thunderbolt. Now with that out of the way, we come face to face with the leader, Giovanni, who was impressed with us for getting this far before challenging us to a Pokemon battle. Starting off, he sends out Onyx against our monkey, so we take it out with two low kicks. Bringing out Rhyhorn, we also take out with two low kicks. Then his final Pokemon, Persian, comes out, but we also take out with two low kicks. After beating him, he drops the self scope, allowing us to see ghost type Pokemon, so we head back to Lavender Town, where we find Gary near the top of the Pokemon Tower, who talks about how our Pokemon aren't dead, but at least he can make them faint. What the hell are you talking about, Gary? Gary starts off with Firo, so we send out Monkey, who will use Rage, locking him in but building his attack. However, Firo also uses Rage, so the Rage battle commences. We are able to win the Rage battle, and next up is Shelter, which we switch in Pikachu for the type advantage in Oko with a Thunderbolt. Oko stands for one-hit knockout, for those of you who don't know. Gary then sends out Vulpix, and we send in King, and are able to poison Vulpix with a Poison Sting. Vulpix roars in retaliation, but King is unfazed and then is able to hit us with a critical quick attack, but they're slowly succumbing to the poison damage, so we land a horn attack, knocking it out. Next up is Sanchu, so we keep King and use double kick, which did less damage than I would have liked, so Sanchu is able to land a slash, taking out some of our health, so we retaliate with another double kick, bringing him into the red. Just one more hit should do it, 
and in his final moments, Sandrew throws some sand at King, lowering his accuracy, making him miss his double kick. So using this to their advantage, Sandrew scratches King, bringing us to 50 health. Again, we tell King to use double kick, and this time he lands it, knocking out Sandrew. It's not over yet though. Gary still has a starter, his ace, Eevee. So we swap in Monkey, hitting it with a low kick, kicking it out of the battle as Gary runs away crying. We finish traveling up the tower till we reach the top, where Team Rocket is. After clearing them out, we escort Mr. Fuji home where he rewards us with a poke flute. Then after that, we immediately head back to Cerulean City since I forgot to pick up Bulbasaur, aka Plant, and head down to Vermilion City to pick up Squirtle, aka Wet. After leveling them up to the second stage so they're on par with the rest of our team, we pick up Snorlax, named EB, and our team is complete. Almost. Now we head over to fight Erica's grass-type gym. She starts off with Tangela, and we send out Goldie, who is unfortunately still poisoned from our last battle, which is an oversight on my part. We use Ember till Tangela burns, which Erica quickly responds with Weepin' Bell. So we use Ember, which doesn't do as much damage as I thought, and Weepin' Bell uses Acid, taking out Goldie, so we swap in EP, which Weepin' Bell immediately puts to sleep. Guess I asked for that. But EP woke up and landed a headbutt, knocking out Weepin' Bell, bringing out Erica's ace, Gloom. We keep in EP, hoping for a swift knockout who also uses Sleep Powder, which EP immediately wakes up from. So we try to go for a headbutt, but Gloom used Sleep Powder again, putting EP to sleep, then uses Acid. So I tried something that I literally just thought of, and I'm upset that I've never tried it before, which ended up working very well, even. EP got stunned bored. Gloom starts thrashing about, doing decent damage, but we are able to land a headbutt, bringing both of us into the yellow. Another thrashing brings us low, so we try to rest, but Gloom is still thrashing and knocks out EP. So we swap in Pikachu, using Thunderbolt, not doing much damage. Luckily, luckily, after all that thrashing, Gloom ends up confused, hurting itself, allowing us to land a quick attack, leaving Gloom at one health. Gloom was able to use another Petal Dance, bringing us into the yellow. So we go for another quick attack, knocking out and beating Erica, winning us the Rainbow Badge. Now with Erica beat, we head to Fuchsia City to go to the Safari Zone to pick up three things. Golden Teeth to give to the old man to get the strength HM, Tauros, named Cow to finish off our team, before leveling up our Goldie, Wet, Plant to their final forms, and to face Koga of the Poison Gym. Koga starts off with Venonat, so we send out Cow, and activating Rage, locking us into the move, but also increasing our attack if we're hit. Venonat responds with Psychic, doing a little damage to us, but increasing our attack. Another Rage brings Venonat into the orange, he tries to tackle us, but misses. Another Rage finishes it off, bringing out another Venonat, we keep in Cow to use Rage, and Venonat uses Toxes, but it didn't affect Cow. So we land another Rage, bringing Venonat into the orange, but this time they're able to land Toxic, poisoning Cow. So we Rage and knock out Venonat with a crit. So Koga sends out another Venonat, so we keep in Cow again to keep raging. They're able to land a double edge, bringing us down to 55 health. It does hurt the Venonat while also increasing our attack. Another Rage brings down their Venonat into the orange. They are able to land a Psychic, leaving us at 17 health, but boosting our attack. And with that final boost, we are able to knock out Venonat with Rage. Now, with his army of Venonat dead, he brings out his Venomoth. We land a Rage, bringing Venomoth into the yellow before Cal's fall to poison. So we swap an EP to finish the job with a Body Slam. With Koga defeated, we gain the Soul Badge. With only three badges remaining. We level up our Pokemon and go to Saffron City to take on Silphco, where we face Gary once more. Who made it all the way up here, not to stop Team Rocket or anything, but to battle us. What the heck, Gary? That's such a dick move. Anyway, Gary starts off with Sandslash, so we send out Cow and start with Rage. Sandslash immediately uses Slash in response, but all that does is boost our attack. We land another Rage, bringing Sandslash into the yellow. He responds with a Poison Sting, increasing our attack even more. Another Rage brings him into the red. Poison Sting raises our attack again. With a final Rage, we knock out Sand Slash. Gary immediately sends out Ninetales, so we keep in Cal. His attack already pretty high, and has decent health. Ninetales is able to land a quick attack, boosting our attack again, even more than it was before. Another Rage brings it into the orange. Ninetales lands another quick attack, building our Rage again. So with a second rage, we knock them out. Next up is Cloyster, and we're able to knock him into the yellow, but they land a supersonic on Cow, leaving him confused. Heading Cow into yellow, as well before hitting Cow with an Aurora Beam, putting us into the red. Cow breaks the confusion, landing another rage, knocking out Cloyster. Gary then sends out Kadabra. 
and I decided to keep in Kao as next is another boss fight and I want to save as many mons as I can for them. So we land a rage knocking out Kadabra. We keep Kao in for Jolteon, also knocking him out with a rage and winning the battle. Gary runs off crying that he couldn't even defeat one of my Pokemon. Next up we fight Jesse and James of Team Rocket. Now Jesse and James are defeated. We face Giovanni. Again, he sends out Nidorino, and we send out Eepy. Nidorino hits us with a double kick, lowering us to a measly 200 health. So we body slam him into next week. With Team Rocket beaten, we take the Master Ball and head off to the fighting gym, where we pick up Hitmonlee before fighting Sabrina. Then we head off to Cerulean City and make our way to the power plant to catch Zapdos. After catching the legendary bird, we head off to the Seafoam Islands to catch Articuno, then land at Cinnabar Island where we go to the Pokemon Mansion to learn more about a mysterious Pokemon called Mewtwo, and also pick up the keycard for the gym. In Bladen's gym, we opt to answer the questions rather than battle trainers before facing the old man himself, who starts off with nine tails. As we send out Cow and locking into a rage, landing a crit, doing a decent amount of damage to nine tails, tries to land a tail whip, but failed. Locked into our rage, we land another crit, bringing Ninetales into the red, who this time lands a flamethrower, which raises our attack, but another rage we're able to knock them out. And we stayed locked into our rage until Arcanine comes out, and knocked out Cal, ending his raging rampage. So we send an Eepy and blast him with a Hyper Beam, winning us the Volcano Badge, and leaving one gym leader left, the mysterious leader of the Viridian City Gym, where we find out it's Giovanni, the former leader of Team Rocket, who's trying to use the gym to rebuild his team. So we gear up to fight him, not as a trainer versus gym leader, but as an advocate for all Pokemon against their crimes against Pokemon. We have to win this battle, not only for the gym badge to fight the Elite Four, but to show Giovanni that Pokemon aren't tools for battle. They are our partners who we bond with, grow with over our journey. We feel their pain and pride. It's not just them out there battling, but us as well. After beating Giovanni, he gives us the Earth Badge. With all eight gym badges in hand, we head off to Victory Road, where we find Gary waiting for us. But we're able to beat him with just Cal, so we pay him no mind. We finally make our way to Victory Road itself, the final challenge before the Pokemon League. We avoid almost all of the trainers while picking up Ultras before getting lost in the cave. Now at the Pokemon League, we leveled up our team for the final time also stocking up on full restores and revives. Now it's time to face the first member, Lorelei, the Ice-type leader. We start off with Cal locking him into a rage, which is able to knock out her whole team, almost knocking out Cal. So, we tend to his wounds before facing Bruno. Here we switch to Wet, since Cal won't do much against his fighting types. Wet starts off with the Surf, Okoing Onyx. Next up is Hitmonchan, so we respond with a Hydro Pump, also Okoing it. Bruno then sends out Hitmonlee. We land a Hydro Pump, knocking him out. Bruno then sends out another Onyx, which we were able to knock out with a Surf. And his final Pokemon, Machamp, which we were able to bring to one health with a Surf, but then he knocks himself out. After beating Bruno in that interesting way, we head up to Agatha, who we really don't have any counters for. Dark traps won't be invented until Gold and Silver, and we don't have any Ghost-type Pokemon on our team. Cow and Eepy are no good since their main attacks are normal type, so we decided to go with Pikachu. It was a tough battle, almost losing Pikachu to confusion, but Pikachu was able to sweep through her team. Next up is Lance, the Dragon Master. Since he has Gyarados and Dragonite on his team, we start with Pikachu, hoping to take advantage of their weaknesses to Electric-type Pokemon, which worked for the first Pokemon, but I got greedy, and Pikachu fainted, so we send in Plant, who was able to knock out both Dragonairs before falling to Aerodactyl. So we swap in Wet, and faint it with a Surf. Now all that's left is Dragonite, who knocks out Wet, but Rapidash is able to finish it off. With the two healthy Pokemon being Cow and Eepy to face Gary, I'm pretty confident in taking the win, as last time we battled, Cow was able to take on his whole team. But this time, Cow is only able to take out Sandslash. So we swap in Eepy earlier than I thought, and start body slamming our way through the rest of his team, and Eepy is able to beat the rest of his team, beating Gary and making us a Pokemon champion. Now time to register our team in the Hall of Fame. Cal, the Tauros. Eepy, the Snorlax. Wet, the Blastoise. Pikachu, the Pikachu. Plant, the Venusaur. And Goldie, the Rapidash. As the credits roll, and we think back on our journey, I think, even though this is my second time in this region, it is still fun. And playing through these older games, I gain new respect for Pokemon that I usually look over. I never paid any mind to Tauros or Snorlax, but now with them being essential parts of my team this time, I have newfound love for them that without them would have been a completely different journey. And I hope to keep that as I play through these games, that I'm able to find that with more Pokemon that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise.
Wait, what's that? We're not done yet? That's right, there's one thing left to do. As we approach the cave in Cerulean City, a chill runs down my spine. I've heard legends of a strong Pokemon that resides there. And there used to be a guard block in the entrance so no one would get harmed. It is my job as the champion to make sure that this Pokemon is either quelled or tamed. This Pokemon, who was created by humans in the Pokemon Mansion. The strongest one. I just struck the Master Ball, Alex. I ain't risking that. 